Welcome to Workflow. And in today's Workflow, we're going to talk about shooting golf courses and uh, kind of how to prepare for a job like that all the way from maybe getting a call from the client real quick to what to expect and what to plan for and what to consider when pricing these things out. Because my personal experience, we've gotten burned a couple of times, not really knowing what we, what we were getting ourselves into. And I've heard a few stories from people who agreed to shoot a golf course for a couple hundred dollars and then... All of a sudden, it turned into like a multi-day project with 16 hours of editing and revisions. And by the time they were done with it, they made about $2 an hour. So maybe a few pointers on how to prevent that. Mm-hmm. Cool? Cool. All right. So Get into it. We, in the last episode, the episode six, I had John Kopek over and we covered pretty extensively the initial call and the right questions to ask of the client. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. A, the size of the project. So... Your average golf course is what, 18 holes? 18 holes is most of the ones average. we shot. Yeah, we had one that was 36 holes, actually, which we didn't know it was 36. <laughs> <laughs> always that, check the map first. Always check the map first. So if somebody's asking you to shoot the whole thing, you're going to spend at least a day, at least a day if you're on a flyovers, um, yeah. if not two days. A couple of things that can make a difference between whether it's a day or two days is how much do you care for having the proper light and more importantly whether the golf course is how frequent the golf course is by the players because there are some major limitations as to what mm-hmm. you can do when there are people around even the photography if you want to do it if you want to do it professionally and you want to spend some time you're probably going to spend a few hours on just planning itself and when I say planning, I mean looking at the golf course map, if you can get your hands on it, or maybe even looking at Google Maps and just kind of staking out where where the different different holes are and how the golf course is laid out and how does it all relate to the way the light travels, the sun travels throughout the day. From there, you can have a better understanding of the angles that, you, that you're going to need or at least which way is your camera going to be looking when you're executing these shots, if it's a video, both photo and video, mm. and you can kind of plan your path around the golf course that way. I've had projects where I spent literally six, eight hours of planning. We've had projects where we went down and looked at it first, just because they were pretty extensive. And I think one of the things to kind of consider or price in is this. If somebody's looking to do this professionally, it's going to take some time to plan It's going to take some time to figure out the battle plan for the shoot, so price it in. Whether, obviously, if you're planning for a shoot like this, get your regular shoot date. Make sure, how do you know what day is good, right? So, Mm -hmm. A, the weather's got to be good. B, usually when somebody hires you for this kind of shoot, they want the property looking their best. Of course, yeah. We've had shoots where we showed up and they were literally still like clipping the grass and they leave like the grass clippings. The right. guys have to come over and just hit it with a leaf blower and they just can slow you down. So make sure you ask them where the groundskeepers are out and when is it fresh cut. Some places do it every couple of days. Some places may just trim greens daily. Mm-hmm. Really depends on the place that you're working with, but it's a major consideration. They're not going to love it if the bushes are overgrown and if the lawn doesn't look like it should. Mm -hmm. It's a promo video. Time of the year is another consideration, depending where you are. Now, the shoot itself, how to navigate around the places. We've had one, only one shoot when we were fortunate enough to have the golf course actually closed for the for day and a half that we needed to shoot what we needed to. And this was a production shoot. It was like a tribute for some anniversary of the first, it was the first PGA club in the U.S., St. Andrews in, um, oh my God. New York, New Yonkers, York. Yonkers yeah. near, in or near Yonkers, New York. It's been a while. These guys literally, the producer, uh, Noah was his name, actually planned it all out with us down to which hour do we need to be where to get the best light. And he's a videographer, so he did a really, a really good job preparing us for it. He also got us a bunch of really nice older Greek guys for the you know, day of golfing, and we just got to follow them around. Mm-hmm. For that shoot, we used the S900, and we shot it with Joe Papa, actually. So we went there, showed up in the morning, and spent a day shooting, just following these guys. The course was closed. It was just us, pretty much, so we could do whatever we want. So we took the S900 and the GH4. Noah had a red or RE, so we just went at it and followed his schedule. That's a big difference in cameras. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) but it, it matched. It looked good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 
Then you have the shoots where you are not fortunate enough to have the golf course shot when it's your your irregular rotation, really. And here's the sad part. So now you have your times kind of scheduled and planned out, and uh, you have to usually wait for somebody to finish their game. Yep. It's a part of etiquette on golf courses when somebody's taking a swing and you're looking at them, you're driving around in your car, you're, you're supposed stopped. to stop and be quiet. So if you're flying a drone around, if you want to extend people the same courtesy, it's really putting strain on the amount of time that you're now spending to get the shot. Clients usually want to show the people the action too. And if you're not planning for this and you just have to come to random people asking them if you can film them or if you have to sneak up on people filming them, you're not going to have that many happy campers. We had a shoot when we were in the rotation, but we asked for everybody to be notified. So whoever's that course that day to expect the drone to be there or don't show up, I guess. Mm -hmm. We also had some talent with us, but we still had to wait for people to kind of finish their play before we could have added. This particular golf course was here at Foxwoods. So oh, that's a nice course. This producer, he believed that he can get whatever he needs in one day. So we said, okay, we'll do what we can. Just have your shot list down to the ones that you really want, and then we'll see what else we can get to. Because if the golf course is open, we may have a hard time getting to everything because of all these wait times. So at least we gave him a fair warning coming into it. What we didn't know, or what I neglected <coughs> to check, was that the golf course was actually two golf courses. So it wasn't 18 holes, but it was 36. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And we discovered it like a day before or two days before. So I just talked to them. I'm like, there's no way you can do all 36 holes. So we really have to go through it. Pick 10 12 of the ones that you want and let's focus on some detail and we'll just work our plan from there. And we got what we needed, everything that we needed. But again, it's a lesson to be learned. These places are huge. They take a long time to shoot. So be ready to set the expectations with client and don't underprice these things because they end up just a lot, a lot of work. Oh, yeah. And it's golf courses. So that's something that people usually pay memberships in. A lot of them try to show their best. So by underpricing this and maybe trying to skimp on the amount of time or the equipment, you're not going to do them a favor. They're not going to they're not going to be loving it. All right, moving around the golf course. What is a good idea to do? And what I didn't know they had were these long golf carts, right? The limos. Mm -hmm. So you can. did you know you can get like a four-seater? I think the longest one we had was like a six-seater golf yeah. cart. Oh, my God. That's usually the one they have the girl drive it around with all the beer. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> we in St. Andrews were able to actually follow the drone. I don't know if Joe was flying and I was working the camera or the other way around, but we had like one shot that the hole was kind of complicated and it went over the horizon. And we literally had to launch the drone, walk with it for a little while, get onto the cart, follow the drone on the other side just so we can get a drone closer to the hole mm -hmm. as we're flying it. So it was pretty complex. It worked out. You don't want to multiple cards, as I said. Ask if it's available and make sure they have it ready for you because if you have a good two operators set up and everything you need for a day, you probably want something bigger than just a little one. You definitely don't want to be shooting golf course on your feet. No. 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 The only the I've pros done it walk the courses. I've done it once. I didn't get the I didn't get the card. It was like my the first golf course I ever shot. It was some charity event. It was fun. I had a 550 with a GoPro, so like a really professional equipment mm -hmm. <laughs> back yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe and you had to walk. <clears throat> I was annoying people. Plus, this, I think this was like a veteran charity, so yeah. a lot of those guys were like army, you know, <laughs> veterans, and right. ooh, they don't take kindly to somebody disturbing their golf game. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. That was my painful lesson. So it's all about planning. It is all about planning. It's about making sure that everybody knows what's going on because people are going to get angry if they don't. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. As far as deliverables, I usually see people looking for a, like a quicker promo videos or maybe like a presentation of the course. So that's probably like a two minute edit. My own experience, if you're coming in with a bunch of footage after spending two days there, you probably take, I don't know, 20 hours. Oh, yeah. To edit that with the revisions. Yeah. 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 Some people ask for... 16 to 20. 16 to 20. Yeah. And some people ask for a flyovers, a hole by hole. So that's probably another, you know what... Like in it, lieu of those helicopter flyovers yeah, they it, usually have? Yeah. From the, the tee to the green, that's pretty popular, just to kind of give people an idea what the holes look like. And um, those, uh, thing about it, if you got to make 18 of them, 
<laughs> Even if you do our each, you know, by the time all the media management is done, you're easily spending another three, four days editing something that's decent. These projects are big. People tend to underestimate how much is expected of them and how big can these projects actually become. So be aware when you're pricing. That's my advice. It's good advice. Micah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. What about so, uh, the compensation? Were you able to extract a day of playing on the course out of them at all? Or what's the, <laughs> I don't play is that golf. likely? You don't, don't play golf. I don't, you may be able to, of course, like, I don't know if it's like in the terms of barter and all mm-hmm. that. I'm not interested in something like that. We oh. usually try to play when we like shoot uh, go-karts, indoor go-karts. Yeah. And I, that's my biggest, I never rode one of these tracks that we shot. Because we're always so busy, and by the time it's done, we're, like, done. So Mm -hmm. we're the guys who don't get to have fun. We we, Dude, we're already flying RCs in pretty incredible places. So I much rather fly a drone on the golf course any day of the week. I see the golf as a social thing. My social thing is the video networking and any of these art events and all that. So not my crowd, but I will gladly go fly a drone around one. Mm, oh yeah, of course. Sounds good. Of course. All right, that's it. So if you guys have any questions about shooting golf courses and any of this, you can always leave them in the comments on YouTube or on our blog. And uh, we will be right back after this. <laughs>